They not like us. They not like us. Why? We are the new breed. They not like us. They not like us. We are the new breed. They not like us. They not like us. We are the new breed. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. We are the new breed. They not like us. One more time. We are the new breed. Welcome back, family. You know what I need y'all guys to do. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me, guys. My channel is growing. Despite not small beginnings. You understand? Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Comment, family. I'm trying to get into the YouTube algorithm. YouTube tripping sometimes, but I'm going to keep peddling it anyway. Support my channel by going to the Cash App, guys, and donating there. It's dollar sign drama 1980. I do appreciate you in advance. You also can support my channel by clicking on the super thanks located under the video, guys. Donating there as well. And like how I tell each and every one of y'all, I do appreciate you. Ten folds over, hands down. I'm proud that you're rocking. Well, 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 guys, I'm back one more time. You know who I am. I'm Drummer 1980, hailing from Columbia, South Carolina. I hope you're having a good day today. And if that's not the case, ask yourself why. Because remember this one vital thing. Happiness is an inside job. And it will always be an internal bad. Guys, I'm back today again with another reaction video. But this time, it's from a very special guest. Some of y'all know him and some of y'all don't. But for y'all that don't know him, and this is your introduction to him. I'm going to tell you something. This man has single-handedly changed my life and changed my viewpoints on a lot of things whenever it comes to the Bible and God and Christianity as a whole. Guys, let me tell you something. The man's name is Stephen Darby. You need to go do some research on it. You understand? Do your research on Stephen Darby. Tell you something. This guy is the truth from the top to the bottom, all right? But let's jump into this reaction video. Let's go. This particular case of this brother that was shot by that police while his girlfriend was filming it. It was so blatant, so obvious that you say in the back of your mind, surely, surely, surely there'll be some reckoning, something should happen. And then when you hear them say that he just made a mistake, it was and then we and you say, well, I know the I know the sentiment where well, yeah, well, black people kill each other every day. Yeah, but not by people who supposed to protect us. I expect thugs to do what thugs do. I don't expect to get pulled over and, and wonder. See, this is no longer the thug thing. This is our women are getting assaulted, uh, choking our women and women. Our women are coming up dead in the custody of police. And. and it hurts. My heart broke. I couldn't. There was the first time I couldn't. As much as I talked, that was the first time that I was literally speechless because I said, Lord, surely something would happen. And um, it gave me a great message, actually. But I hate to stand on that to preach, but I have to say something. The, the scripture came to my mind immediately that you know the who are we hit me in my mind like who are we as a people that we have no government we have no we really don't even have leaders we have no money no country no backing nobody to fight for us we're the easiest scapegoat and so the scripture came to my mind Deuteronomy 28 and 66 and this explained my heart because I have sons and I'm like, Lord, you know, I've never felt this before. I've never felt, I've never felt afraid for my sons. I've never felt in fear of my life. And it says in that, in that life, 
shall be in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. Meaning you, your life will always be uncertain. It used to be police get behind you was looking for a ticket. Now your mind goes to, could this escalate? Did I get the wrong office? We, we almost back in the fifties, it feel like. It's like black man in Mississippi, they cut the man's head off. This is not even, I maybe we're numb to it now, but I'm seeing something. I told y'all, I told y'all in the conference, something is coming. Something is coming because you're dealing with a people that it's desperate. Their backs against the wall. They're losing their numbers. Now, I believe according to Galatians 6 and 6, and then you read that. Don't just hear me say Galatians 6. They are ODing faster than homicide. So they, it, 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 it's like a last ditch effort. They are ODing faster than. Guys, let me chime in for a quick second. The case, what Pastor Dorby is referring to, is uh, Orlando Castillo. The gentleman and his girlfriend was pulled over. And Philando told the officer, he was real calm. And um, he was on the passenger side. He told the officer, says, sir, I do have a weapon, but uh, I have a license for my weapon or what have you, right? I have a CWP. The officer unloaded his gun into the guy for no reason at all. He unloaded the gun into him, guys. Do anybody remember that case? And you can go look on the internet and find it. You can go see for yourself. His girlfriend asked, why did you shoot my boyfriend? And he said, I don't know. The guy was an upstanding citizen. They tried to smear him, but they couldn't find anything. I think he worked uh, at a school in the cafeteria. Clean guy. Didn't have nothing on him. And this is what we've been talking about for so long. I'm going to tell you something. Listen at me. This is an ancient hate, guys. I, I've been saying this for a while now, but let's talk about it. And we're going to get into it. Now, this probably is like part one because there are going to be many parts to this video because I'm going to come back and chop them up and uh, give them to the audience. But this guy got acquitted as well. Wasn't charged. Nothing didn't happen to the guy. Like how we always say, the minute we bring up something, what these authorities doing they always reflect back where well, y'all do it to each other that's no reason to harm people y'all get that through some of y'all sambo's head that's no reason to harm somebody these people are supposed to have oversight over you they supposed to be the people that's in charge right not what i'm saying because that's what is they supposed to be in charge they're supposed to abide by the law that they created, but they don't do that. They operate outside of the law. They have loopholes through the law. They have trap doors and escape hatches in the law for you. What did the Dred Scott decision say? Huh? Can somebody say something? Put it in the comment section. A black man has no rights. A white man is bound to respect. Not what I said. And it's still on the books. It's still that if you don't believe me, go check. I look at our black men. I say, man, it don't matter what we do. Your weapon is your color. Your weapon is black. That's the weapon. Your weapon is black. So I said, Lord, you know, you got to help me so I can minister because um, this is the first time since I've been saved with the Holy Ghost that I have ever felt like vengeance. That's the first time I've ever felt that way. I had to pray about it. I really had to pray. I said, Lord, you got to help my heart because this brother, I, I researched this brother. He was a good brother. That brother was a good brother. Brother had hundreds of kids that looked up to him. Good brother. They couldn't find no dirt. They tried to smear that brother. They couldn't find no dirt on him. And when his mother got on her and started talking, I didn't even disagree. I'm like, yeah, say what you feel. See, the first thing that come to our mind, listen, is forgive, right? That ain't what the Bible said. The Bible says if your brother come to you and he repent, he got to repent. He repent. Then, see, 
We've been just releasing stuff without them ever making a concession. They got to say we're sorry. They got to come and repent. Means change the way they were thinking. That's what the Bible says. And so his mother did not release them. She didn't release them. And believe it or not, I was glad. Because I get so tired of our people coming on there, calm down, don't riot, don't riot. And, and we sitting there bubbling, needing to release this emotion. And they telling you, calm down. How can you be mad if they ain't mad? If the family ain't mad, how am I get mad? But when she said what she said, I was like, thank you. Because it, it gave me a release. <laughs> said, finally, somebody's saying what needs to be said, that this is a wicked nation. I said wicked for all of y'all who come to this nation and think this nation is good. That's because you don't know our experience. We know what it is to live with a devil. A real walk. I told you I had to pray. This is the first time I ever said to myself, are these people devils or what? I, the first time I said that, because this is devilry, it's devilment. Then I went online and looked at the people attacking his mother for being hurt. Attacking her for being upset. They won't even let us have our pain. Tell us how we ought to grieve. How we should feel How we should respond Lord he's saying a mouth full guys I can stay him 30 or 40 minutes Just talking about what he just said alone Forgiveness Okay Look at it like this here Forgiveness is for you Not the other person right You don't have to make no announcement About I forgive you Did anybody catch that You don't have to make no announcement That's between you and God that's not between you and everybody else. Okay? Start there first. I still want justice after forgiveness. God told me, I didn't know. Did somebody just hear me? I still want justice after I have forgiven you. Even though you don't know nothing about me forgiving you, I still want justice. I want recompense. If they come to you and they apologize or what have you, whatever they did wrong, they have to make it right on all levels, on all levels, including financial. Oh, God, did you miss it? Did anybody miss that? Even financially, don't just come with your mouth talking about, I'm sorry and I won't do it. No, 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 no. The things that you took, return them. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that you have to return some things three folds, six folds, seven folds. Yeah. Don't just come to me thinking that you just going to get out of it just because you you utter the words. Oh, no. There going to have to be some payments that come from that. And it's the same way with God. You think God go forgive you if you don't never come and ask for repentance? The same way God. And let me say that again, because this thing getting good to me. You think God is going to forgive you without you going to him with the heart of repentance. When somebody is genuinely sorry, you can tell. You can tell because they won't have a million excuses why I did this and I did it because I... No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I took from you. I stole from you. Here is your item back. Here is this compensation for what I did I know I can't repay you But here is a token Or what have you You understand that And yes Philando Castillo mother She was on one Because every time Somebody get deleted They always want to put a camera Up in their face Do you forgive them All this old stuff Get that camera out of my face That's between me and God Don't worry about whether I forgive them Let's talk about the punishment Let's talk about justice right now, okay? Guys, because what happened is whenever you don't get justice and you just settle for a check, getting a check is fine, but get justice and a check. The check might be a little smaller, but I'd rather have a combination of the two. What you do, if you don't get justice, it put a bull's eye on each one of us because you know what happened? Cops have immunity, what they call immunity, guys. And that's simply if a cop wronged me, hurt me they don't pay restitution the state does in other words the taxpayers take up the burden not the police officer 
You understand that? Let me say that again. The officer never get punished. They might get fired, but they'll just get transferred to another job. That's why you hear them get another job in the nearby town or the adjacent town. You understand? They are not punished. They get to walk away with their pension, with everything intact. Like nothing never happened and the burden falls on the taxpayers, guys. That's why this continued to happen over and over. And the system is working perfectly in their favor because it's designed to work like this. Don't think the system is broken. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a well or machine that you see. So that's all right. 400 years is almost up. <laughs> If you don't know who we are by now, you just want to be lost. You're lost. You want to be lost. Turn to Isaiah. So as you can see, I was very stirred up this morning. Yesterday, I tried not to think about it because I... It hurts. It hurts. It hurts because you, they told you play by the rules, go to work, do the right thing, come out of the streets, take care of your family, love your wife, do what they say, comply. And the first dude, you say, well, he got killed because he was a thug, but well, he didn't comply. Then he, the, the, the Oklahoma police woman that shot that man, that killed, I can't think of his name, but killed the guy on camera, said he was reaching in his car with his window up. They acquitted her. The white folks just had a, a meet and greet for her. I mean, they was coming to shake her hand. This is the, and then she got all her back pay. It's almost like you become a celebrity for killing us. Darren, Darren, what's his name? Darren Wilson, the one that killed Mike Brown. He became a millionaire because white folks sent money into him by the millions. They're becoming famous. George Zimmerman sold the gun he shot Trayvon Martin with for over a hundred thousand dollars. They're becoming famous celebrities for killing us. Can anybody wrap your head around that? Listen to what he's saying. And I know y'all have heard this before, but sometimes things need to be reiterated because some people don't catch it on the first watch. It's just what I'm going to break this down step by step, guys. And he's telling nothing but the truth. This is the gospel. This is what churches need to be teaching. Yes, we understand the fivefold ministry. We understand the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, uh, the teachers, and, and the evangelists. We understand all that. We understand the Holy Ghost. Some of us do. Okay? We understand Acts 2.38, okay? And others need to find out what Acts 2.38 mean, okay? Yes, some of y'all need to find out about repentance and coming to God. Yes, some of y'all need to find that out. Family, churches don't teach nothing like this. You know why? Because they don't want to offend other folks. It's not about offending people. It's about the truth. And the truth will set you free. But you have cowards standing up in the poor pit that don't stand on anything. You understand? They ain't strong enough to stand on anything. They jelly bags. They don't stand for anything. They don't talk about anything was happening to the people. And in this case, we are talking about black folks. Okay. I don't have nothing against white folks, but I have something against white supremacists. Yes, I do. Because I know they are my sworn enemy. Not because I said they are. Because of their actions. Their actions is in direct opposition of me just being alive, not doing anything, not bothering anybody. I'm just trying to live. But you can't live because your enemy is always poking their head in your business, prying, uh, seeing what you're doing. That's what the alphabet boys was created for if you didn't know it. Oh, God. But churches need to teach this for the people can be aware what's going on. Okay, we can jump and shout and sing and do all this stuff. We can do all of that. This here need to be taught in churches. But a lot of them don't even know because a lot of them is on the train, if you understand. Yeah, Sam born and shucking and jiving and buck dancing. They want the people in the dark because they part of the problem, to be honest with you. 
And the first thing you say, well, what about black boys? People kill people all the time, guys. You won't never stop that, especially in the community where there is crime and uh, where there's poverty. There will always be crime. They can eliminate that overnight, but they don't want to because they just want an excuse to do bodily harm to you. I'm telling you, they just need this excuse. These people need you, but they hate you at the same time. And we talk about the white supremacists now. If you are a brother in Christ, not this watered down Joe Austin mess, we ain't talking about that because there are a lot of racist people that classify themselves as Christians. No, no, we ain't talking about them. We not talking them. Listen that because I know somebody gonna be in the conversation. We're not talking about them. I'm talking about a 100% true brother in Christ. Meaning when I hurt, you hurt. Okay. When you see something going on, you help me as I would help you. You supposed to be your brother keeper. You're not my keeper. You are an enabler of the other system. That's against me. We ain't talking about that, brother. We talk about lock arms and you believe in reparations. Let me say that one more time because that takes so good coming up my mouth. If you don't believe in reparations because God believe in recompense. He believe in restoring and you don't. Apparently, you ain't my brother in Christ then. Simple as that. Let's go. And we're lullabied to sleep because we think that there is something we're going to say to appeal to their humanity. And we ain't did it in 400 years. So I'm no longer asking for them to see me. I'm crying for judgment now. Yeah. Judgment. You know why God won't judge it? I told y'all before, God won't judge this nation because we too in love with it. We still embracing them. We still all around it. We got to let that go. Let this American dream go. It ain't no dream for us. It's been a nightmare. Give my sons a hand. Thank you, son. I'm done. Turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 63. Yeah, I came ready this morning. I didn't. I didn't want to. Didn't want to say a lot, but testing. You got me. Isaiah sixty three. The title of this message is "Vengeance is Mine and It's Coming." That's my title. It's coming. You have to understand that we've been conditioned through the legacy of, of uh, Martin Luther King, we've been conditioned Amen. to accept how we are treated. Amen. We've been conditioned to go along with it. Amen. What you don't understand is if you really study Martin Luther King, he got his philosophy from a homosexual. Martin Luther King was militant before Bayard Rustin came to him, that homosexual that changed the, the movement into a nonviolent movement that he got from Gandhi. And Gandhi was a racist. Gandhi hated black people. Amen. Study for yourself. Amen. When Bayard Rustin came to Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King was strapped guns, men outside the house with guns. Bayard Rustin told him, put the guns away and, and, and go nonviolent because Bayard Rustin was in love with white men. Study it out. He was a white man. He still is. They changed the movement. Now, no, no, we don't advocate violence. That's why I'm preaching what I'm preaching. But trust me, I'm a black man. Amen. I'm a black man. And we've never had a voice in this nation to stand up Amen. as black men. We've been neutered in every level. We are the most hated. We got the least, but the most hated. Despised just for being black. And we don't understand the warfare. The war, look, the, the, that's not, it's not beginning to be a war. The war is on. It's been war. They've been warring. If you can't see war, look at the rhetoric when Trump got elected. Look at that rhetoric. They never condemned it. They never condemned the rhetoric. And this has given spark to just psychos. Guy went on a Portland train just stabbing people. Went to White guy went to New York, stabbed the black, old black dude. They picking off our women and children. People coming up missing, y'all. And y'all don't know this is white supremacy behind this. And so the problem with us is we just think we're going to appeal to the humanity. Can't we all get along? 
at some point we're going to have to cry to our God. Not for equality, but for judgment, not even for justice. Judgment. Judge it. Judge it. I know y'all are going to hit me upside the head, but this is part one. I'm going to cut it off right here, guys. This is part one. Stay tuned for part two. Just be on the lookout for it, guys. All right. And I know YouTube is probably going to flag my channel, but it'll be OK. But guys, the truth is the truth. You think that you're going to appeal to these folks? You might as well forget it. 400 years and you still think that you still going to appeal? Something wrong with you at this point. My eyeballs are on you. I'm fixated on you. Because apparently then you suffer from Stockholm Syndrome or something going on. I'm not in love with my oppressor. I'm not in love with that. Whatsoever. I'm not in love with this nation. I'm not in love with this nation. And the first thing people, well, if you don't like it, go. No, 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 no. Our people built the country. You go. You are immigrant. Not me. They only about two or three sets of people that weren't immigrants here. Everybody else or guests. Oh, God told oh my, I bet you don't like that, huh? They black Indians. They red Indians that was here. And then the slaves that was brought over. Everybody else or outsiders. I know y'all don't like that. God told me I didn't know. Woo! I know you don't like that, but that's the truth. Everybody else fled here. Talking about they was just wanting to go and no, no. Somebody need to go research the doctrine of discovery. What the Catholic Church put out. Anywhere your foot touch, that's your land. Take it. See, and people go say, see Christianity. That ain't that don't have nothing to do with no Christianity. Guys, understand the Catholic Church don't have nothing to do with no Bible. They cherry pick certain scriptures out and they form the whole entire religion. That's why they always talk about going through Mary and Mary is the mediator. The Bible don't say nothing about that. The son of God is the mediator. He said, no man comes to me except through the. The word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. I don't want to go too deep into it, guys, because I know that I can lose some of y'all, and I don't want to lose none of y'all. Right now, okay, but that don't have nothing to do with the Bible. See, once you start understanding, then your eyes will come open. At some point, your eyes will come open. Okay, even our good brothers, the Black Hebrew Israelites, they just take pieces of the Bible, the Old Testament, because they said. Everything else have been tampered with. See, and they just create this whole thing, this whole religion, out of just the Old Testament. God didn't say that. Because if you know anything about the book, everything works together if you know how to uncode it. But they'll say somebody tampered with it. But but the New Testament is saying the same thing the Old Testament say. Paul say I talk no other thing than what the prophets say would happen. <laughs> but guys, tell me what you think about this video. Guys, some of y'all need to wake up. This system is after you and this is your weapon. That's why whenever that a black man walk out there, you in danger, bro. And I don't live in no hood, so I'm not looking at black folks like that. How about that? My biggest fear is walking into Walmart and some fool shoot up the place. Little Jimmy, little Tommy, shoot up the place. That's my fear. But go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the share button. Come on back to see me, guys. And until next time, peace. And remember, there is more.